Well, I can tell you, for the last weeks or so, I know exactly what prayer can do. All because you have been on this prayer journey with me. So I thank you, Antioch Baptist Church, inside, outside, and everywhere. Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for getting on the knees with me. Thank you for never giving up. I believe in the power of prayer. So I stand here today. I stand here because it's nothing but the power of prayer that has me standing here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Antioch Baptist Church. Good morning, my beloved church family. Pastor Gaines, God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Drake, Reverend Harden, Reverend Jones, Reverend Coppage, and all the other ministers. Thank you for your encouragement and your support. Slide, please. This is my sweet family. My husband, for 54 years, Bernard. I thank the Lord for the journey we have had. I thank you for these precious years. I thank you for the prayers that you pray over me, with me, and I thank you for encouraging me, telling me never to give up. I thank you. I have been a mother for 53 years. I am the mother of Rodney and his beautiful wife, Brenna, my son, Reggie, and his gorgeous wife, April, and my beloved, Robin. But this is my greatest joy, my grandkids. And, and, it, and if you have been in any of my Bible studies or you have been in the women's ministry, you know the stories. Now, you know Kennedy is with us every first Saturday. She's a participant of the women's ministry. And there's my warrior, Chase, my master chef, Miles, my exuberant, Ella Bella, my genius, William Renard, and my precious Bronwyn. These are my babies. I have, I raised my children on my knees, trusting the Lord for the outcome. My foundation scripture passage that I have over my bed that I remind myself every morning is 3 John 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. That's important to me because I want my children to know the word of God. I want them to not to know it, I want them to believe in the word of God. As a family, if my grandbabies were here now, they will be screaming out real loud this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I can hear you, my sweethearts. Grandma can hear you. And so would you please join me in prayer? Father, as I come to you this morning as your servant, I stand here because you have allowed me to be here. I am eternal grateful for this opportunity. But Father, I want to first make this prayer petition, remembering my sisters and brothers who just recently experienced the loss of their mom. I ask you to comfort them, to give them the blessed assurance that it's going to be all right. I know how they feel this morning, but be with them. And Father, I want to pray for those who are experiencing fertility problems, who are trying to have babies, 
We know about the struggles because we see it in the Bible. I just ask you, Lord, to give them a miracle, give them a blessing. Father, there are many here who are experiencing discouragement, pain, because Mother's Day can be a joyous day and it also can be a very sad day. So I ask you, dear Father, to lift them up, to wrap your arms around them. And Father, let the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let me represent you. Let your word come out and let it touch hearts and minds for encouragement. There is a very familiar passage story in the Bible. In 1 King 3, 6, 28, I know you all are familiar with it. It's about the judgment of King Solomon as he ruled between two women, both claiming to be the mother of a baby. The two mothers lived in the same house where each mother cared for an infant son. One of the babies died and each woman identified the remaining baby as her own. They argued back and forth in front of King Solomon until finally he said, both of you say this live baby is yours. Someone bring me a sword. A sword was brought in Solomon order, cut the baby in half. That way each one can have a part of him. Please don't kill my son, the baby mother screamed. Your majesty, I love him very much, but give him to her. Just don't kill him. Another woman shouted, go ahead, and cut him in half. Then neither one of us will have the baby. Solomon said, don't kill the baby. Then he pointed to the first woman. She is the baby's mother. Give the baby to her. From this story, we learn from the Bible a biblical perspective of a mother's unconditional love for her child. The mother from Solomon's story revealed to us that a mother is a selfless, a loving human being who sacrificed many of her wants and needs for the wants and needs of her children. We call that, and moms know about this, unconditional love for her child. If we really dig really deep in the word of God, all the way from the Old Testament, all the way to the New Testament, we learn about Sarah, we learn about Ruth, we learn about Hannah, and we learn about Mary, the mother of our Savior. They help us to understand the character and behavior of a godly mother. A godly mother is a woman who represents the heart of Christ to her children. She is continually aware of her influence over their lives and future. And she makes sacrifice whenever necessary for her children and welfare. Godly mothers are first godly women. They are not one way at home and another way in public. All goody-goody at church, but you go home, you can't live with them. Even when her children do not have a godly father, a mother can have a great impact and influence on her children's spiritual future. A godly mother allows God's Holy Spirit to sanctify her, to purify her, to pour love in her heart, redeem her, and shape and transfer her through the seasons of lives that she go with her children in life circumstances. The journey of a motherhood, becoming a godly mother, doesn't start when you give birth or adopt a child. It begins with you knowing your identity in Christ. The Bible tells us consistently to honor and love our mothers. Not just on Mother's Day, the second Sunday in May, that we set apart to honor our moms, 
I always felt sorry for the moms waiting for the, by the telephone for the kids to call. I always felt sorry for the moms who kids don't show up on mom's day. You know, sometimes moms, I believe they set us up. I believe we have been set up because you know what the Bible tells us? According to the word of God, we should honor our moms every day. If you look at these words up here, anywhere from starting with the Old Testament and Exodus, all the way to the Psalms and Proverbs, all the way to the Gospels, all the way to the Epistles, what do you see up there? It says, honor your mother, not just on Mother's Day, but every day. So today, in honor of Mother's Day, I am so grateful to have this opportunity to share with you some remarkable mothers in the Bible. They are not perfect, but they are relatable to every mother in some way. Prayerfully, their story will provide a model that would teach us all some invaluable lessons for our spiritual growth as moms, mommy, Grandma, Gigi, Nana, Nona, Big Mama, Auntie, whatever they call you. I hope these stories will help you in this fallen world. I pray you will take away from these examples wisdom for maneuvering the landmines and challenges we face every day. We live in a dark world regarding the welfare of our children and grandchildren. Additionally, I want to share with you how my life as a mother and a grandmother was shaped by the love and examples of beloved moms, my beloved mom, and many of our mothers here in this church, how they have blessed and transformed my life. My message is the influence of a godly mother. And I want to start always with the word of God. And I want to start with the kings, because the kings had moms. In the kingdom of Judah, the Gabarath, and I'm pronouncing it wrong because it's a hard Hebrew word, was an official position held by mother of the Davidic kings. She was the most important and influential woman in the royal court, and she was the king chief counselor. Reading books, if you read through the books of kings, you'll see that her name is listed along with the king's name. Whether he did good or evil, mom's name is right there. In times of conquest, both the king and his mother represented royal power. As we all know, biblical kings had many wives and many concubines, but they only had one mama. <laughs> one mama, clearly making her the most important and influential woman in the royal court. The Gabara of the eternal Dominican kingdom of Jesus Christ is Mother Mary of Nazareth. Mary had influence too. If we look at John 2, 2, 1, 5, and I read to you, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples also had been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. And Jesus replied to his mom, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not come, but what did mom say? Mom said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. A godly mother influence. She had influence in Jesus performing his first miracle. So today, what can we learn? We learned that the mothers of kings influenced their sons for good or evil. A mother has influence. Now, this isn't to say that all the kings who did evil had evil mothers, or that all the kings who did good had good mothers. 
But all of these mothers of kings certainly had some influence in the young lives of their sons and in who they eventually turn out to be. So how do you connect this to your life? Well, there are many children with godly mothers who grow up and choose to do evil. And there are just as many children as who have ungodly mother who grow up and choose to do good. As a mother, we have to embrace the fact that our faith, our belief in the word of God influence our children. Our children's lives are shaped and influenced by our words and action. William Ross Wallace in 1865 wrote a poem praising motherhood called The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. It's the hand that rules the world. What is reflected in this poem is how a child is a reflection of the woman who bore him or her, not only in appearance, but also in word, action, attitude, and character. Mothers should never underestimate the influence that their faith, their attitude, and lifestyle have in and on the lives of their children. Mothers have the power to change the world by raising sons and daughters who will be barriers of God's light, proclaimers of truth, defenders of justice and forces of good. A godly mother has influence. My foundation scripture passage is why I focus it on every day, because my life goal is to instill in my children and my grandkids the word of God. Hallelujah, I'm so God, glad God is a God of, he's a God of second chances. He is a God of second chances because what I missed as a mother with my children, my heavenly father has given me the opportunity to teach and influence my grandkids. Hallelujah, that I can now do what I should have done. I can now have that chance in the lives of my grandchildren. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he grows older, he will not abandon it. The apostle Paul remind us that even one parent, a grand, or one grandparent can have great influence on a family. Timothy had the benefit of being taught the faith of God by his mother and grandmother. Paul mentioned this in 2 Timothy 1.5. He says, I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it is in you also. 2 Timothy, as you can see, point out Lois as being a woman of sincere faith that she passed down to her daughter and to her grandson, Timothy, who eventually became Paul's companion and partner on the mission field. And Lois followed Christ. She had a clear and lasting influence on her household that had an impact on the life of her grandson, Timothy. When I look among Antioch Baptist Church, what I see and what has impacted my life it's mother, mother Lydia Stone, Sloan, her daughter Deborah Beasley, and her grandson Chase Beasley. Can you see the word of God coming to life? Can you see how they are serving the Lord? And not only that, I think about my sweet Mrs. Alexander, Mary Alexander, and her daughter Renee, and her daughter Candace. There are many examples, but see, these are the ones that have impacted my life and had influence on me. Lesson we can learn, Mother, is that it began with a commitment to have diligence in teaching and guiding your children and grandchildren. As mothers and grandmothers, we must be consistent and intentional in teaching and training our children in the Word of God. For me, for me, from the day my sweet babies came into this world, my prayer every day is for my heavenly father to give me longevity, to plant his word and the seed of salvation in their hearts. I want them to know who Jesus Christ is. 
I want them to know. Because see, they can play soccer all day, but it's the word of God that's gonna take them to life. But see, I want you to know, please know mothers, grandmoms, and all parents, you cannot teach and share what you do not know. That's why 2 Timothy 2.15 says, do your best to present yourself to God as a prove, one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who can correctly handle the word of truth. You can't tell them anything that you do not know. The greatest legacy you can pass on to your children and your grandchildren is a legacy of prayer, faith, and the word of God. And let me, let me introduce you to my mom, my children's grandma, and my grandchildren's great-grandma, Mrs. Erma Collins. My mother was a fearless, godly woman who believed in the power of prayer, and she trusted the Lord with all of her heart. My mother was not a woman with a lot of education, but she was a woman that was gifted with godly wisdom and knowledge. My mother was courageous, kind, and compassionate. And I cannot leave out of this one, Eric. All you need to do is ask her grandkids. She taught and trained her children and grandkids to know right from wrong, as stated in the word of God. Just read in Proverbs 31, I see my mom through every word, every sentence, every verse, every stance. My mother was a woman with influence. Her neighbors sought her out for help, support, encouragement, and prayer. She was just loved by all who knew her. My whole life, my mother set the mark for love your neighbor as yourself. Sharing what we did not have, we had meagers, to those who had absolutely nothing. As a child, I felt it was my responsibility to do everything that I could to make sure that my mother had a wonderful Mother's Day. I can still remember the time I entered a radio station contest to write a letter about your mom. And I wrote this letter, and I won. I was able to shower my mother with flowers and gifts from high-end stores in downtown Columbus, Georgia, and she had a big smile on her face as we entered stores we were not welcome in. But we went in there proudly, and my mom accepted these gifts, and she was happy, and I was happy. I was in elementary school. Life for my mom was not always a bed of roses. As I reflect on our theme this month, strength and the struggle. I know my mother suffered with depression for many years. Back then, it was referred to as the blues. With the loss of two children, a baby and a son murdered, she had to cope when there was no facilities, nothing provided for those who experienced this kind of loss. My mother was able to overcome her struggles and experience and experience joy each day through spiritual hymns. I can hear my mom singing, Precious Lord, take my hand. I can hear my mama saying, His eye is on the sparrow. You see, my mama made a joyful noise unto the Lord, and her faith and what she taught me as that I tried to pass on to my children is the power of prayer. And I know, you know about prayer. I attended the women's luncheon, and I was feeling really good that day. And then I get a phone call that my daughter had had a massive stroke. I learned later that my daughter had a 40% chance of making it. But at that luncheon, I didn't fall apart. I didn't start screaming. I called my sisters together and I said, we got to pray. What can we do for you, Rochelle? You can pray. I believe in the power of prayer because my daughter was on a ventilator. But the next day, that Sunday, after all the prayers, because I call out the prayer words, I call everybody, Robin Gaines, everybody, Kim, everybody was praying for Robin. Everybody, if you knew how to pray, 
I say, I don't care. Tell them, just pray. That morning, Sunday morning, my daughter came off the ventilator. And they put the telephone to her ear. And I heard the words, Mama. I heard the words, Mama. And that was encouraging to me. I know you asked me how, why I'm not standing by her bedside. Because you know what the Lord told me. He told me, you put your hands on the plow and you keep looking for it. Because see, you be here, I'll be there. And see, you cannot get on your knees down here and you get up and you leave all of it here. You have a choice. You can either get up and believe or you can get up and keep on worrying. But I made a choice that I was going to believe the Lord. And I trusted the Lord. And when I went to see my daughter, I know why he told me you stay here. Because when I got up there, I could not have been a witness to him. Because I would have been up there being one of those mamas just going outraged. But when I got there, I was able to witness to others who were sick, who was depressed, who was hopeless. As I witnessed to my daughter and ministered to my daughter, I was able to minister to others. Sometimes you don't know what a person is going through. But I do know if you are praying and if you believe in the power of prayer and you believe in the word of God, you stand still. You stand still. You keep your eyes focused on the Lord. And see, and I want to tell you this, and I know I've I, I watched my time rubbing games. I'm watching my time, believe me, I am. I want to share this with you. I was staring out the window, and most of you've heard this, not knowing what to do. The Lord speaks. If he don't speak to the word, he speaks to creation. He sent me an owl at 11 o'clock in the morning for me to look. And you know what? I looked that up. And most of you, if you in my class or anything like that, you have heard the story. That hour was to tell me to keep focus, to use guidance and wisdom, Rochelle, in making your decisions. And that's why I can stand here, because I believe in the word of God. And I also do know that you don't get through life by yourself. There are mothers. You see these ladies up here, Mrs. Dorothy Graham, Mrs. Mary Alexander, Mrs. Catherine Daly. These are mothers who have influence they inspire, they encourage me. Each one of them adds something to my life to help me. And then there's my Sarah. And then there is Mrs. Audrey Calloway. These are mothers of the church. These are mothers, if you would just take the time. And you know what people care allows me to do? It allows me to sit, listen, and learn. Isn't that a blessing? So. Happy Mother's Day. But there's a few little things I would like for you to take away. The influence of a godly mother. The first step in becoming a godly mother with influence is surrendering your life to the lordship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The greatest legacy you can pass on to your children and grandchildren is a legacy of prayer, faith, and the word of God. A godly mother wants her children to be godly, and she leads the way by setting the example. A mother cannot pass on to her children values and qualities that she does not possess herself. Study the word of God and study it with your children. And mothers, take care of yourself. A godly mother knows that wearing herself out, acting as a slave to her children, is not good for anyone. Our Savior rested. I encourage you to rest it, not just on Mother's Day, but you take time to rest every day. Yes, mother, we can give selfless to our children. But what good would that do if you're all worn out? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Mother's Day.